Hi, everybody. I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at Bar-Ilan University. And today, I'll be giving you a first introduction to the Linux command line. So what is Linux? Linux is a family of open source Unix-like operating systems. The Linux kernel was released by Linus Torvalds in 1991. So we have this guy to thank. It's provided under the GNU General Public License. Why was it developed? Well, in those days, we used to have to go and buy one of these workstations that cost a lot of money. It was really for businesses and so forth. And Linus Torvalds came and he made a porting of Unix to an x86 architecture so we could run it on our personal computers and so forth. And nowadays, it's ported to more platforms than any other operating systems. In fact, Android, which you probably know well, is based on Linux. Linux is usually packaged as a distribution or what we call a distro. Distros are called Red Hat, Fedora, Ubuntu, CentOS, Suzy, and many others. And a distro basically it combines the Linux kernel with all kinds of other uh, programs that run on top, such as a windowing system and a desktop environment like GNOME and KDE. So the different types of things we'll be seeing here are, are parts of just the general Linux distro that you'll probably be seeing something like that. We're going to talk about the Bash shell. The interface to the operating system is called the shell. This is a program that it allows you to run programs and to give input to programs and inspect the output of programs. And the shell that we're going to use is called Bash. It's the born again shell. It's the most popular Linux shell today. In the past, we had the, the first shell that you used to run on Linux was called SH, SH short for shell. Then there was CSH and TCSH. And in many of the uh, different types of uh, old school industries like chip design, we still use CSH as our basic. But many, many years ago, people moved over to Bash, which is uh, kind of an easier and more popular shell. So first we open a terminal, usually by something like right clicking on your desktop environment and select open in terminal, and that will give us a prompt. So let's start with a hello world. Every programming course has to start with a hello world. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna tell bash to print out hello world and we'll use the command echo. The command echo is just a program. So we'll write echo and we'll give it the arguments hello world, which we're going to put inside quotations over here. So echo is really just the name of a program, and hello world is the argument to that program. So here I am at my command prompt, and I can write echo, and then with a uh, single quote, hello world, bang, and an ending quote. And as we can see here, it returned to me hello world, as we can see over there. We can try other programs, for example, date. What do you think date's gonna do? So if I write date, what I get here is the date and time of when I uh, exactly recorded this. So how does the shell know how to find the programs that are called date or echo that we just found? Well, it's gonna search through a list of locations on the file server, okay? So where is this list stored? There is a variable, an environment variable, that's called path path with um, capital letters, okay? So there is this variable called path that has a list of locations that we should look for whatever program we just wrote in the command prompt. So how are we gonna know what are these locations that um, it's looking for? And that we have to dereference this variable called path. So how are we gonna dereference it? We're gonna write echo. So it's just gonna repeat what we just said. I mean, we have that kind of ridiculous echo program we saw before. Why would we ever use it? Well, one of the reasons is to see what path actually means. So we go echo dollar sign, that is going to dereference the variable name that comes after it. So dollar sign path is going to give us the, um, the what the variable path is equal to. And this gives us a list of locations on the server which are used to search for programs. So if I write echo dollar path, what I get is the path. So as I can see here, there's this thing that says slash bin, and this colon is the separator for a list, user local bin, user bin. So these are different things in my path. And that means that when I write something like uh, echo, it will go and it will search if it's in bin or if it's in user local bin or if it's in user bin. The first one it will find, it will run that program. So how do we know actually where it found the uh, program echo or the program date? inside the uh, list of locations that we had in path, we can ask uh, Linux, so how would you ask it? You would ask it which. So I write which date. 
and it will go run through the list of locations that we had in the path variable, and whatever it found first, it will return to us. And we see that it is stored in a folder called slash bin. Well, that's not surprising because bin is short for binaries. And so usually compiled type of binaries that run our programs are going to be in some sort of a folder called bin. And slash is going to be our root directory. So slash bin is where basic programs such as echo and bin and which and others are going to be stored. Um, alternatively, we could have run it directly on, uh, we could have directly run that program. So we, instead of looking through the path, we could have run slash bin slash echo. That's the absolute path to the echo command and then provided the arguments, which are hello world. So how do I know which one was found? I write which echo and I see that in slash bin slash echo, I have it. I could have just run slash bin slash echo and then um, something like, you know, uh, hello, and I see that it returns hello to me because I directly ran that. So we're inside the shell, and it's a very important thing that um, we have to navigate inside. We saw that there are these things that we called locations in the Linux environment. I mentioned before that we have this slash, and that is the root of the file system. Uh, basically, the file system is a big tree, and the first place where everything, the top of the tree where everything starts from is this slash, this root. All the directories and files lie inside the root. So there may be files in here and there may be directories that have files inside them and directories inside them and so forth and so on. So we're going to traverse down this tree until we get to um, the actual file that we want to run or work with. Okay. And uh, there's a, a very important thing that we have a location. The place that we are currently working, the current working directory, is the location that we're at. Usually we start at what is called the home directory. It's such an important directory that it actually has an alias, which is a tilde. So um, when we talk about tilde, that's our home directory. It is actually a place that's underneath the root. So again, we have a big tree. And at the top of the tree, we have our slash. That's our root directory. And our home is down below beneath the slash. But just to, to easily get to it, we use this tilde as an alias. How do we know what the real path, for example, of our home directory is or where we are right now when we start our, you know, when we opened our terminal? Well, we'll write PWD. PWD is print working directory. Um, that will print out basically what the current working directory is. And um, then we'll see that we're in, you know, some sort of a directory underneath root. That is our home. Okay. Each user, when they log on, will get a different uh, home and they will usually start over there and when they write PWD it will point to their home. We can also see what the directory is by looking at another environment variable called home. So echo dollar score home, uh, dollar sign home will show us what our home is and it will be the same as our tilde. That's where we are right now. And this concept again of where we are now is really important. We have to know where we are because everything that we do relative is relative to where we are now. If we want to look at directories that are underneath us, um, we are going to you know, start from our directory and go underneath. For example, in our home, we probably have a directory called desktop and downloads. And so they, we don't have to uh, do anything but reference to them. Um, uh, and if we're at root, you know, we can go from root and keep on going down until we get to home or, or different directories that we have. So let's run PWD. And we see that PWD returns slash data slash home slash team and ad that is my home directory i can also again do echo home and i see that it returns the same thing we can actually navigate relatively through the directories with cd and cd is for change directory and change directory we can either give a um, relative or an absolute directory so if we do cd slash we're going to get to the root of the file system or cd slash bin we'll get to the director uh, to the uh, slash bin directory. Um, but usually we're going to start where we are at our current working directory and then go relative to it. So the two real easiest things to do are dot and dot dot. Dot dot is going to go one directory up to uh, the parent directory of where we are right now. And dot is our current directory. You don't usually need to use dot, but if we use dot, then it kind of explicitly says start from the current directory that we are at and and go down from there we can actually we could have write, written cd um, team in ad without the dot slash team in ad 
Um, I can go up one level by going CD dot dot. And now if I do PWD, I see I'm now at data home. If I want to go back into team in AD, I can do CD slash team in AD. Oops, CD dot slash team in AD. And I see that now I'm back again at data home team in AD. I could have done just um, a bunch of different things. First of all, I could have done CD minus would return me there. Um, or I could have just done CD team in AD because it is a uh, relative path. And you see also that this is also called tilde. So I could have done again CD dot dot. Now I'm somewhere else and I can go CD tilde. It will return me to team in AD. I can use absolute paths. So for example, if I want to go to where we found echo before, I can go CD slash bin. And now my PWD is in slash bin. Um, and you see that that's how I can go uh, back to my home directory and so forth and so on. So really, I can navigate up and down and around, either with uh, relative or with absolute paths. To see what files and directories there are in the current folder, we're going to use one of the most important commands in, in Linux, which is ls. Remember, ls and cd and all of these, they're just programs that are probably inside the slash bin folder. So ls... Uh, if we write ls, we'll see all of the files and the directories that are in our current working directory. Um, for example, if we want to see a specific file, a specific, a specific file or a specific folder, we can um, give it as an argument. So ls dot slash downloads or just ls downloads will show us the directory called downloads or actually show us what's inside that directory. And we can do all kinds of things with that. Um, there are flags and options in most Unix commands and specifically in ls. So for example, ls minus l is going to show us a uh, the directories in a list view, in a detailed list view. So usually options are going to start with a minus. They can also start with a plus or, or just with nothing. It just really depends on the command. How are we going to know that? Well, we can search for it on Google and then get a nice HTML page. It will kind of show us all the options and so forth. But we can also use um, two options. One of them is to ask for help. Most of the time, it will start with something like minus minus help or minus H. And then it will print out something like a list of all the options that that command has. But if we want to get detailed um, you know, explanations of what each of those options does and how to use it in examples, we can usually look at the manual pages, which we access by writing man and the name of the command. Not all commands have manual pages, but many of them do. So to see what files I have in uh, the current folder, I will use ls. So when I do ls, I see that I have these different files in my current folder. If I go to a different folder, let's say um, slash um, the root, right? I can do ls slash. I see that there are all these different things inside the root folder um, that, that, that we have over there. Um, one of them that I can look at, for example, is slash etch has all kinds of junk in it. So you see that there's a lot of things here. That's really kind of hard to look at. Um, so what I'll usually do is use ls minus l, which will actually show me a detailed list of what I have. Or let's say if I did that on etch, you see that I have a, uh, whoops, ls minus l etch, uh, slash etch. Then you see that it shows it in kind of a longer list with all kinds of other things. Um, how did I know that I could do ls minus l? Well, I would have done something like ls minus minus help, and then it will show me um, a help status of all the different things I can use over here. Um, and these are the information of how to use uh, with all of these different options. I also could have just done man ls, and you see that it gives me a whole um, explanation, a manual page. It could be easier just to Google it and look at the Google entries of that. But if I go down and I find minus l over here, it says use a long listing format, um, and that's what we've been using. If I hit Q, it will quit that, as we'll see in a moment. We can also use what we call globbing or wildcards to match many strings. Now, this is a very important concept in general, and it's used in many different things, but it's really often used in a Linux shell. So globbing is basically two main characters. The first one is a question mark, and a question mark means match any single character over here. So if I write ls and I give it as my argument, my file with a question mark, what that means, it will match any file or directory that is called my file with uh, um, some other character over here. My file a, my file one, my file 20, 
uh, sorry, it will not match my file 20 because it's only matching one character. If I wanted to fa match my file 20, I'd have to put two question marks or my file question mark zero or my question my file two question mark will match my file 20. So uh, actually the question mark is not as useful because it only matches really one uh, one character over here. What we'll usually use is an asterisk, a star, which will match one or more characters. So uh, if I do ls my file star, that will match uh, my file one, my file 20, my file is very big. Okay, so it will uh, match all of those. So stars are really useful. I can do something like my file star zero, it will match my file 20, my file 30, my file 3000. Okay, so that's a really nice thing to do is use this star wildcard. There are a few more options in globbing, but really those are the ones that are um, mainly used and found. So let me show you how to use globbing. If, for example, I uh, went to ls uh, etch, right? And I have all of these things, but I only want to see the files that actually start with an L. So what I can do is, let's say, ls minus L. I'll use D just to clean up a bit of the junk that will come out. Um, I do slash etch slash L star, and then it will only show me the files that started with um, an L. As you can see, it only returned those ones over here. And so that's a one way I can use um, globbing. Let's say I only wanted to show the ones that had um, two uh, two letters after that were only five um, that were only uh, five letters long. So I could have come over here and um, uh, L. Um, you know, and put uh, five, uh, four question marks, and then it will only return for me this lib and l type of a thing because I only put um, four question marks after the l. Or I can just show all of the uh, files that uh, are under here that have uh, five letters, and you see that all of these have five letters in them. So these are different things that I can do with globbing. So I just wanted to mention if we're already looking at directories, something that is known as dot files. Many programs are configured with plain text files that are known as dot files. They're called dot files because their names start with a dot. And in Unix or in Linux, when a name starts with a dot, it's actually hidden. So when I just write ls, I will not see it. Um, so when I wrote uh, ls on my directory before that, I didn't see that many files. But if I actually add the minus a option, which will show the hidden files, I see that there's a whole lot of these files that start with a dot that I wasn't that I didn't see before. And again. They're usually used for all kinds of configurations and things that you don't want the user usually to deal with or look at or that you don't want it to bother his eyes. So we um, hide them unless we use the minus A flag for all. Okay. Um, what are important dot files? There are a lot of them actually. And many different programs that we install will provide their own dot files. But for example, in bash, we have the dot bash RC file and dot bash profile, which will be run when every time we open a terminal, and they'll configure all kinds of settings for our bash, cell, uh, bash shell. Um, different things that we use like git, vim, ssh, they'll have their own dot files like dot git config, dot vimrc, dot ssh config that will really help us to configure these different um, types of programs. So um, if you really want to find something that uh, may be hidden, it may start with a dot, and then you'll have to use ls minus a to see it. So again, when I just ls my home directory, I see that there are a bunch of files. I can do this in a detailed way. Uh, but when I actually add the minus a option, so um, I can see that there are a lot more files, right? And I have things like bash rc and uh, bash profile and uh, different things like that dot ssh and other types of files over here that are hidden in uh, in general. So um, I can do things like uh, ls uh, uh, ls dot bash rc, and I can see just uh, that file. But if I would have just done ls, it doesn't appear here.